In this video field lesson, you'll learn how to inject slow-rise polyurethane foam to insulate hollow wall cavities in a stud frame wall. The project here is happening in a modern, attached garage that was built without insulation, but this approach applies just as well to the typical type of older homes built entirely with hollow wood frame walls. This foam injection process can also be used to insulate the airspace in homes built with double brick wall construction. In addition to the spray foam injection kit you'll see here, you'll also need a stud sensor, a tape measure, and a felt pen to mark walls for injection holes. You'll also need a cordless drill and a one inch diameter hole saw to actually make the holes. A coat hanger and some kind of stopwatch are important too, and you'll see why later. This is the inside of the garage we're working on. It's attached to the house and all the stuff has been moved out of the way to make room for the foam injection work. Begin by using a stud sensor to find and mark stud locations. You'll be drilling one row of injection holes in the space between the middle of each stud cavity at a lower level and at least one other row up near the ceiling. You might also need additional rows of holes between these two on extra tall walls or walls with narrower internal cavities. Walls with three and a half inch deep cavities should have holes three to four feet apart vertically. Two and a half inch to three and a half inch deep cavities need holes two to three feet apart up the wall and walls with one to two inch deep cavities require rows of holes every foot up the wall for complete foam coverage. In this garage, there's solid wood above the windows, so no injection is possible there. Drilling through drywall is fast and simple because this material is so soft. To make the injection process easier, slope the holes downwards from horizontal by 20 or 30 degrees as they're drilled. This is the Tiger Foam Slow Rise Foam Kit we'll be using for this project, along with optional black electric heating jackets. It's a low pressure, two tank, closed cell polyurethane system that's completely formaldehyde free. The black jackets raise component temperatures to the optimal level of 82 degrees Fahrenheit or 28 degrees Celsius. The best way to handle the tanks efficiently is by putting them back into their cardboard shipping cartons after the heating jackets have been applied then strapping these cartons onto a cart. But before this happens, you need to connect hoses to the tanks. Cut the tape securing the hose, remove the protective cap on the tank fitting, then tighten the hose fitting onto the tank with the wrench provided. With the tanks connected to their hoses, open the tank valves all the way, then stack the boxed foam tanks on a cart. While you could have the tanks loose on the floor, the cart makes it easy to move them around and keep them upright during use. Tiger Foam Polyurethane Spray Foam is government tested and safe when cured, but you do need protection while applying it. This safety kit contains goggles, a respirator, and nitrile gloves. There's also an optional set of coveralls if you want to protect your clothes. Since hollow wall injection involves directing foam downwards into the wall cavity, you'll need to cut short lengths of tubing to fit over multiple spray gun nozzles. These nozzle and tubing assemblies get clogged with hardening foam during normal use, so you'll need to make a bunch to have on hand to swap them out. The tubing used here has a quarter inch inner diameter cut to 12 inch lengths. Make cuts with a sharp utility knife, not shears or wire cutters, since these crimp the ends of the tubing and impair the flow of liquid foam. This tubing is a friction fit over the ends of the spray nozzles, and these clip onto the spray guns later, as you'll see in a minute. Before you start spraying, put on your respirator, test for a good seal, then don safety goggles. The last thing you do before spraying is apply petroleum jelly to the end of the spray gun where the nozzle clips on. This jelly stops foam from sticking to the gun when you change nozzles later. Purge the air from the hoses by spraying into a garbage can before clipping a nozzle in place. When both components flow freely from each hose opening, they're fully purged. Now's the time to prepare the coat hanger you saw earlier in the video. Cut and bend it into an L shape for feeling the foam level inside the wall cavity during the timed tests that come next. 
The task now is to determine how many seconds of spraying are required to fill each cavity. And this is where your stopwatch comes in. Spray for 30 seconds, let the foam harden for at least 90 seconds, then use your coat hanger to determine the level of hardened foam in the cavity. Here you can see the height of the foam after 30 seconds of spraying. Mark the level of hardened foam on the wall, measure its height, then use this information to figure out how many seconds are required to fill up the cavity to the height of the access hole. In this case, each second of filling results in about an inch of hardened foam. Since the nozzle and tubing contains mixed foam components, the foam hardens inside if spraying stops for more than 30 to 45 seconds. That's why you have spare nozzles with tubing on hand. With fill times calculated, inject foam into each lower hole. Use your judgment about fill times when you come to narrower wall cavities like those in corners. Accurate filling is a lot easier if you have someone watching the clock and calling out start and stop times. You're aiming for a small amount of foam to ooze out of each hole when you're done. This is easy to clean up later when the foam is hard, as you'll see. Since the foam gives off heat when it's curing, the inside of the walls get warm where the foam is located. Any gaps result in cooler wall surfaces. Renting an infrared video camera allows you to see where the foam exists behind the wallboard and where you might need to bore more injection holes for a complete fill. The white, red, and yellow areas show warmer wall surfaces because that's where the foam is. So what you see here is full foam coverage just the way you want it. Repeat the injection process to fill the upper part of each wall cavity, working from the holes you drilled up near the ceiling. Check things again with your infrared camera, then get ready to finish things up if all looks good. It's not unusual for one tank to get empty slightly before the other one, so keep your eye on things as the tanks come to an end. Both tanks need to have all remaining gases released for safe disposal. Hardened foam is easy to remove from wall surfaces with a putty knife, and that's the same tool that's ideal for applying wall patching compound before sanding and repainting. The bright colors show how this hollow wall has gone from losing a lot of heat before foaming to much lower heat loss shown by the blue colors after foaming. And these benefits will last for as long as this building stands. <laughs>